that. Catch up on the AR, how you did that? Check out lift up when you take off, how you did that? You put switches up on your blinkers, how you did that? Your LV back turned to a legend, how you did that? What's good? What's good? Hey y'all, it's your girl Simone and welcome back to my channel. If y'all can see by the title, today's video is another Subby Sunday. Before we get into this video, y'all already know what to do. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, give a girl a thumbs up and comment down below. Thumbs up, my bad. Yeah, before we get into this video, y'all already know what to do. It is Vlogtober day number nine it's vlogtober day number nine y'all i'm pre-recording so they could get these i can get these videos out and today is the first day of week of story times so today all the way up until october the 15th i'll be giving y'all a story time every single day y'all every single day so it is 22 bro you ain't even have to embarrass me like that hold on y'all i just got embarrassed did i close that window i don't think i closed it okay so it's 22 days left until halloween y'all we're almost there should i put this down here because it just seems so like nothing is right here i don't know what's going on i need to get this together 22 days left until halloween you guys and y'all i can't wait for it to be over with because y'all my birthday of course and all this editing and recording is um yeah was well, not the recording part it's the editing part so let's go ahead and get into this subby sunday so the title for this one is the time i fucked two hold on the time i fucked two dudes from rival hoods in the same night and how they found out you starting gang wars sis let me get into this story before let me close this window though so it says laughing myself hey simone it's sugar again with another story i want to say thank you for reading my first story the time my ex and i fucked at the swingers club y'all remember because i remember when she was saying she was gonna send this story but y'all remember when they fucked at the swingers club and then her homeboy the um the homies homeboy had farted in her face yeah i mean yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that one it's funny because i have something kind of similar y'all see in the week of story times because i'm gonna tell a little funny story but yeah anyway so i said yes i have done some wild shit in my life but your girl makes sure she stay tested and safe period for all the negative nancies in the comments judging and think i don't care about my life or my yanni says i very much do and will continue to share my stories because i ain't embarrassed about a damn thing and some of the negative nancy commenting probably have done some wild shit too but act like they're a saint sipping my tea none of my business though lol but thank you for not judging me simone love you sis no i don't judge because you can you get one life to live you do whatever to, whatever you want to do with that life like period you you do what you want to do and you making sure you're safe at the end of the day you getting tested sis live it and i'm going to hear all about it so let's get into it i was talking to this guy we're going to give him a name marcus he's from a tray we were talking for a couple of months and seeing each other tough it, it was close to his birthday and i was telling him i wanted to plan something special for his birthday and get a room and he agreed the day of his birthday, I came to his house and, su and surprised. The day of his birthday, I came to his house and surprised him. Cooked breakfast, part one of his birthday sex. Afterwards, I was in the process of getting dressed, and he tells me there's a change of plans, and his homies want to hit the strip club and go up for his birthday. And I was very much pissed because I was very much pissed because nigga, I don't care. They could do that for you another day, and I already had plans for him. He kept reassuring me that after he was done, he would still do our own thing. But I wasn't having that, especially since you want to wait and tell me after I gave you some ass, nigga, fuck you, lol. I was mad and getting ready to head out. And before I did, I said, since you want to hang out with them for your birthday, the next time you want your dick suck, ask them niggas. And that made him hot and he started going off and making his way to the front door. I hurried up and got out of there because I knew he was about to check me and let my ass have it. But who gonna check me, boo? And Sheree voice. Fast forward to nighttime, since I was in the house, I was bored and looked on IG and saw he posted on his story. And mind you, he ain't contact me all day since we got into it at his crib, but this nigga had the nerve to post a video of two strippers dancing on him with their titties all in his face, so I was livid. So I decided to match his energy. I've been knowing this other dude for a while. We're gonna name him Mad Max, cause that nigga was on a whole nother level of crazy, more crazier than Marcus. Mad Max is from Rolling 90s, and if you know, you know them sets don't fuck with each other. It be on sight. I hit Mad Max up, asked him what he was doing for the night, and he told me he was free. And before I could ask, he asked if I wanted to chill with him and go out to eat. And I said yes. Mad Max fuck with me tough since we go way back. And I didn't look at him like that because of how long we knew each other. Though he was fine as fuck and his dick was amazing, I'd rather we keep it at that. But at times we would fuck with each other and it would never be a problem because we knew what it was. If he was fucking with a girl, I don't trip, vice versa. He ain't my man and I ain't his girl. We decided to hit up a burger joint and park in a vacant parking lot to eat. 
Marcus must have seen me looking at his story because this nigga had the nerve to text me asking me what I was doing and if I wanted to come see him when he got home to make it up to me. I rolled my eyes and text that nigga to ask his homies and I put my phone on silent because I knew he was going to blow my shit up. I had been drinking earlier and so did Mad Max. We started chopping it up in the car and making sexual eye contact with each other. Somehow one thing led to another and we started making out of his car. As much as I wanted him to fuck me in the car, I didn't want to run the risk of getting caught by 12 or especially by his ops. I definitely I definitely didn't want to go back to his crib because that was just as hot as being in his car. So I said, let's go back to my crib, which you will see why that was a bad idea. The whole car ride, his dick was on hard and it turned me on. I couldn't help but to suck it while he was driving to my house. As soon as we pulled up to my place, we got that shit cracking in my living room and made our way to the bedroom. After an hour of fucking, I took a mini break to get something to drink before we started another round. When I looked at my phone, I seen I had a lot of missed calls and texts from him, but I wasn't finna deal with this shit tonight. It can wait till the morning. As I'm making my way to the room, I heard banging on the door and instantly Mad Max looked at me and I looked at him and he could tell by my face that I was lost at who could be at the door. He instantly grabbed his Glock, <laughs> y'all. He instantly, he instantly grabbed his, y'all know, Glock from his pants pocket and I told him to hold up and let me see who was at the door first. As I was making my way to the front door, there was another bank on the door and I heard a voice say my name. And I heard a voice say my name. Answer this motherfucking door before I break this bitch down. I know you see me calling your stupid ass and I'm going to tell your ass once again, open this fucking door. <sighs> Sass. This is getting good. This getting good. When I say my heart dropped some on, it was Marcus. I did not know what to do, but I knew I needed to open up that door before he got to tripping some more. I heard up and put my clothes on and told I heard up and put my clothes on and told Mad Max to hide while he put his clothes on since there was no way of him sneaking out my window without Marcus seeing him. But when he realized whose voice it was, he laughed and said he wasn't hiding and wanted the nigga to come up in here. Marcus and Mad Max hated each other and was always had beef since we and always had beef since they were from the opposite sets. I ignored him and I kept begging him to hide and ran to the front door to open it. Once I opened it, I told Marcus I just woke up and why he was banging on my door. He looked at me and rubbed his goatee and asked me who car was parked in my driveway. Oh, I came up with a lie and said it was my homegirl car because she couldn't drive home drunk. So I took her and she left her car here for the night. Instantly, he gave me the bitch you think I'm stupid look and told me that's a nigga car. Ain't no female gonna have 22 inch rims on their car and proceeded to ask and proceeded to say you must not value you or that nigga life because you got me fucked up. And he was going to shoot this bitch up. <laughs> Once he said that, Mad Max came from the room and he said, what's up nigga while smirking. I knew I fucked up at that moment. Both of these niggas had their guns and was going back and forth and Marcus went off to say this the bitch ass nigga you put up in here and he started making threats to him talking about fuck his set and his dead homies etc. That made Mad Max hot and started to say the same and Marcus asked him what he was gonna do about it and started flashing his Glock. I begged, Mad, I begged Mad Max to leave because I didn't want that shit going down, especially not in my spot. Mad Max did the same and made it known he was on the same type of energy as Marcus was on and kept laughing and telling Marcus that's why I was blowing her back out while you was blowing up her phone. And told me out of respect for me he was going to leave but let it be known to Marcus to pull up to his hood if he's still on that and when he catch him in traffic it's up. Marcus was still talking shit, but Mad Max proceeded his way to the door while waving him off. After Mad Max left, Marcus was going off on me and wanted to slap the shit out of me and told me how lucky I was he and told me how lucky I was he didn't shoot up my little friend. I told him to calm his ass down and said this wouldn't have never happened if he wasn't out with his niggas and them wretched ass bitches. He wasn't trying to hear that and was more worried about us ending the night. Fast forward, we made up that night and went back to his spot. I made it up to him. We fucked all night to the day. I'm cool with both of them, but I stay out the hood politics, but they both laughed about the situation after the fact. I have so many toxic story times with Marcus that I will definitely be sharing, especially the one where I got arrested because of him laughing my ass off. But thank you again for reading my story. Sis. I want all the tea. Sis, this is good. I want all the tea. And again, like I said last time, if you make a YouTube channel, please let us know because, girl, I would have been, I would have been so scared. And then the fact that you went back to Marcus' house was smart too, because I would have been like, yeah, we gotta get out of here, because I don't know if Mad Max gonna come back over here. He know the opposite. I don't. Y'all, sis.
that's crazy. I would have, girl, I would have been scared. I would have been like, I got to go. <laughs> my damn, oh my God, that's crazy. Oh, <laughs> I can't, I can't, y'all. You see, you have me shook, sis. I most definitely want all the stories, so please send more. I want to know when you got arrested. I want to know everything, sis, because your life is amazing. And now me over here, when you say Mad Max, I'm trying to get a description, like, because I know people from that hood, so I'm over here trying to get a description, like, Think about it like, could do he kind of look like that? Is that why she said that? Like, who could she be talking about? Like, let me stop. I don't know who you talk about though. But thank you so much for sharing, sis. Let me get into the next story. So let's get into the next story. Depending, we might do three stories or four, depending on how long these are. This one is pretty long, but it's small. So that's probably why it's showing long. But let me see. So this one is titled, She Drugged My Boyfriend Just So She Could Expose Him. Let's see what's going on in this story. Hey, so I love watching your YouTube channel and I want to get started on my own. I have a channel, but I haven't really posted, lol. I want to tell this story up there, but I'm scared. But anyways, girl, you have all the names because fuck him and that weird ass bitch. Oh, okay. And yes, yeah, sis, go ahead. But wait till it's best for you to tell your stories. Don't, don't just do it because other people want you to. Because some people be nosy and it's not the best time for you. But yes, yeah, sis, do it. Let us know. Let me know the channel. I will tune in. I will support you. But let's get into it. So it says, now into my story. I got to give a little backstory for everything to make sense. So when I was about 15 slash 16 and he was about 18, 19, I met my ex Christian on Instagram. Christian was real fine, still is, but he just hella toxic, which is why we could never be together. You could tell by looking at him, he's a little hood slash artsy type nigga, if that makes any sense, LOL. Of course, when we first met, it was casual flirting. DMs didn't exist on Instagram yet, so everything was in the comments at first. Ooh, I used to hate them days, but that's how I used to catch a nigga cheating. Ooh, that's how you would catch your man in a girl's old post, put his number. Ooh, but anyway. And we were kind of like besties. Both knew we wanted more, but couldn't be because I lived in Virginia and he lived in Jersey during the time. Fast forward to the summer, we both of us are graduating high school, summer of 2017. I was, wait, hold on. You said both of us was graduating high school. When y'all met, he was 15, six, you was 15 slash 16, he was 18, 19. So how y'all graduate at the same time? That man must have, that already should have been a red flag. No offense to nobody, but it's like, he probably stayed, he liked you when you was young. So he probably stayed at the high school because he liked young girls. That's why he stayed there so long because he had to be in his 20s at this time. They ain't playing in high school. All right, whatever. Okay. Okay, let me finish. I was 18, going on 19 at this time, and Christian was about 21. We started to talk even more because we both had cars now, and we planned on seeing each other. One day, he texts me saying, guess what? I'm going to be moving to North Carolina, so I'll be two and a half to three hours away from your school. So I will come see you sometimes for a few days since we're getting serious. This made me really excited because he was bringing up... This made me really excited because he was bringing up wanting to make me his girlfriend. I listened to my mom when she told me, you don't need to be starting college with a nigga. Laughing my ass off. Laughing my ass off because as soon as the title was added, the bullshit came. Don't it always? Don't it always? The first few months of our relationship was real good. You know the typical honeymoon phase. But I started to notice little things as we started to talk more and get closer to us first meeting. Niggas tell on themselves when they... Niggas tell on themselves when you really listen. Mm -hmm. He kept mentioning this new best friend he made since he's moved to North Carolina. Her name is Hunter. I somewhat knew of her because she smokes and she also sold weed. So he'll go over there to smoke with her and her other home. He'll go over there to smoke with her and her other roommates, guys and girls. But I started to notice he'll talk about her too much, like saying stuff like how she be touching on me. Like one day was also on their sectional having a session and she tried to grab my print through my pants. Hearing that pissed me off, but I'm like, nah, he ain't going because he told me. But I still noted it. Fast forward after him saying that, I noticed more. He let me have his Instagram login, which was a big mistake because I seen him in Hunter DMs. As well as DMs between him and gay man child, never mentioned it. The same night, he randomly texted me and said, hey, babe, I ain't finna be on my phone tonight because I'm going out and ain't finna be home for like a day or two. So I'm gonna hit you. I was reading the message like, the fuck you mean you ain't finna be on your phone and not staying at home for a day or two? Shit had me hot, but again, Again, I was being a damn dummy shaking my head this was my first serious relationship so I didn't want to lose it but I woke up to a random North Carolina number calling repeating and asked for Christian so I responded to the message saying who's this you know the typical and girl she just started to send me receipts when I say my heart was in my ass she said yeah I'm Hunter and you're JT right yeah well since y'all been dating I've been fucking him and sometimes just sucking his dick we got a hotel right now and he's laid down beside me asleep. I got your number through his phone. 
So me, I started to ask questions about everything. I've been questioning and she confirmed it all for me. I wasn't even sad anymore, but was pissed. At the point, I wanted to beat his ass. She kept asking to FaceTime me, so I eventually agreed and asked my friend Mo to come down to my dorm to be a witness in case he tried to lie. She spilled more tea about how he fucked multiple girls from different colleges in North Carolina and even bitches at the school I was going to at the time. And I felt disgusted. She also brought up his ex from Jersey, Zay, and how he still talks to her. He still does it to this day, laughing my ass off. And her weirdo ass occasionally stalks my Instagram. But where the title came in about her drugging him and while on FaceTime call, I was like, is he really there with you right now? Let me see. So she sent the picture and then also showed me on the call her yelling, trying to get him to wake up. He didn't move an inch and she giggled. Yeah, girl, we smoked earlier, but I rolled a blunt for him to have while I gave him head and I laced it. Casually just said the shit to me over the phone. I felt so disgusted by his actions, but also sad because what the fuck he could have died. She not only messaged me about what he was doing though, she texted his entire contact list and posted it on his Instagram story tagging us both. Talk about fucking embarrassing. You know how... I you know how iPad sync everything that's on your phone? That's how she was able to do everything. She learned his iPad password and as soon as he fell asleep, she went to work. This conversation went on This conversation went on from about 1 a.m. to 6 to 7 a.m., girl, till he was about to wake up. When he woke up, he was calling me, but I didn't answer because at this point I was cool off his ass. I didn't care to hear you explain anything we just done. He was blown on my phone though, and so was her. I I answered her phone call like a dummy I was back then, saying what did she want because I was sleeping on it and I was over it and just didn't care to hear anymore. She started saying how he punched the hotel bathroom mirror and fucked up the whole room because like I said, she texted his entire contact, logged and posted on social media. Christian has a... Christian has a lot of followers and is overall known, so everyone was hitting him up about her doing that while he was asleep. She was asking me to calm him down, and I was like, nah, you shouldn't have did that, really. I understood her intentions, but dragging my boyfriend then to blast him, the shit was very overdramatic. Could have just went through his stuff like normal people would have when he was asleep or just tell the girl I'm with your boyfriend right now. Not at all condoning hers or whatever type of behavior, but he was... But he has every right to be upset. I eventually ended up answering his call though. An hour or two later, he immediately was like, baby, are you okay? What? I was very short and monotone with him, but playing dumb because he thought I didn't see the Instagram stuff yet. Stories was new around that time, so that's where she exposed him at and made a post on the timeline. But he... But when I get upset, I can't hide it, so I blacked on him. Why the fuck do you have this bitch Hunter texting and calling my phone saying how y'all been fucking and shit? He got all defensive like lying at, he got off defensive like a lying ass nigga dude shaking my head, saying the picture of him laying with her was Photoshop when he got on the same outfit <laughs> on the FaceTime call, like, okay, sir. I told him about how she drugged him because he said he doesn't remember much after he was smoking with her and she was giving him head and he got real mad, threatened to shoot up her house and some more of this crazy shit. But it turned out that Hunter had a crush on him and he didn't want anything else besides sex from her, which is why she later admitted it to me. Which is which is what she later admitted it to me. We broke up for like a year and I dated someone else briefly and, and I took him back which started the four most toxic years of my life. Hope my story wasn't too long, but if you want to hear more about... I hope my story wasn't too long, but if you want to hear more about him, I could tell you the story about how we almost had a baby shaking my head. But I always kept receipts, so I asked some of the receipts from this night. Surprisingly, still have the text thread in my phone from when she texted me. Let me know if you want another story. Sis, I want another story. That is crazy. Let me look at the messages. Ooh, he was really... Uh-uh. Dang, sis, you literally got all the receipts. Like, literally, sis got the whole... Not her taking a selfie with her tongue out. Oh, sis, I'm so sorry that you went through that. That is, is That sucks. It, I know how it is to be just in love with somebody, but I'm happy you over it. Because clearly you said, like, that was then to your ex. So I know y'all not together no more. So I'm happy you are moved past that. Hunter was crazy. She looked crazy in them damn pictures. So I'm not even gonna lie. No, I'm just kidding. No, she do look crazy. I ain't gonna show y'all though. But um, that is a mess. It's crazy because I swear it's always stuff like that that happens. Some crazy shit. Niggas be getting themselves into situations or the person they're with in a situation. That's why I feel like just be single because you could be fucking with a crazy. You could have be cheating on me with the most craziest bitch in the world. Now she want to come for me. What what did I do? <laughs> come for him? Like what did what did I do? Like come on now. Why is you coming for me? 
what what did i do to you girl let me know what's going on you bye y'all bye but yeah that was so crazy sis um that's good she didn't like nothing really bad happened to him because somebody lacing your dress could be serious like he could have oh that could have been a crazy situation but that's crazy and the fact that she really sent you all of this and was blowing you up females would do that and it's crazy because i have a story about because a lot of girls don't hit me up but over my man <laughs> one of them it was not my man but i thought it was my man but it was her man but anyway y'all but that's it thank you so much sis for sharing this story let's get into the next story i'm gonna do one more story and then that's it because y'all i still got some stuff so it's 11 11 until the next story so this is the last story just because y'all i gotta i gotta do some stuff and get ready for tomorrow but anyway this is the last story so this one is titled the time i linked with a dude that reminded me of my dad since this is that that title is uncomfortable but let's get into this story i don't know why this is deja vu right now i hate having deja vu this shit pisses me off but y'all <laughs> let me get into this story hey girl i got another story for you so a while back i told you about the site and she said don't say the site i was using to get some dick lol anyway i met another guy after the breakup i was being a hoe and proud of it so this guy me and my friends call him painted beard <laughs> i'm gonna tell you why later so after the pilot guy i was seeing he stopped being consistent so i left him alone and so i was and so I was like, I need another guy to satisfy these needs of mine. So I went back on the site and put up an ad. This guy responded, he's handsome, about 42. His dick was really big and he looked clean and well kept. Oh, and I'm 28. I was 27 at this time. So I replied, we talked on the phone for a bit and he... I talked we talked on the phone for a bit and he wanted to confirm I was a female of course I did my research and everything checked out we met up at a motel and he was cute and all I was really nervous for some reason I don't know why but I felt like a prostitute <laughs> that's the vibe this motel was given like people came there to fuck anyways he booked it for overnight at least he didn't get an hourly because anyway he booked it for overnight and when we get in he rose up we're talking and drinking i did loosen up a bit but i was still extremely uncomfortable i don't know why to be honest anyways we started up and i felt extremely stiff like my body just wasn't connected to his on a sexual level he was cute and smelled good and had a nice size y'all know anyways we start up when we were on the phone, we talked about him eating me out, which he didn't do. LOL, I was confused. He said I could ride his face and everything, but he ain't do none of that. I didn't think, I don't think he even fingered me, LOL. This thing was really big, so you know you gotta be big on foreplay. Anyway, he puts it in, and I had to mentally prepare myself because he had some grip, girl, and I didn't get head fingered or anything. So we were going at it for about 20 to 30 minutes and we took three breaks. I kept getting dry. We used lube every time, but I just wasn't into it. He was talking a lot, saying stuff like, you like this big black thing. So my own girl, I felt like I was in a porno. He said, you see me and you, we could get some big things. In my head, I was like, why is he talking? I already had to concentrate on this big ass thing being inside of me. And now he's talking is making me lose concentration on that. I asked him to stop talking, and so he did. I started writing him, and I saw him tighten in his mouth. In my head, I was like, what the hell? It looked like he wanted to say something, but because I told him to stop talking, he was trying his best to keep his mouth shut. Anyways, we took another break, girl. 45 minutes ain't even passed. He goes to the bathroom and freshens up. I let my spliff and was thinking to myself, I just can't put my clothes on and leave. But then I was like, I gotta wait for my Uber. That's gonna take time. I was trying to calculate everything in my mind. Then I, I was trying to calculate everything in my mind. Then I was like, maybe I could just take this L and let him do me. Then I was like, nah, he's too big. I'm not wet. I started thinking, why doesn't my vagina want to do this man? And then a voice came into my head and said, he reminds you of your dad. And I was going to send you a picture of Painted Beer and my dad, but I blocked both of them niggas. So I'll try to describe them as best as I can. So my dad is 49, very fit, close to bodybuilding shape, dark skin, bald head, and gray beard. Painted Beard is 42, fit, dark skin, with a bald dark skin bald with a black beard oh and by the way we call him painted beard be and by the way we call him painted beard because his beard is too perfect and it looks like some of it is filled in not a strand not a strand of gray in that beard the joke my homegirls made is that i would ride his face and the residue from his painted beard would be on me laughing my ass off no sis why i thought that i thought that was like he came back and his beard was gone and that's that's why he didn't want you but no let me finish anyway yeah they look very similar dressed very similar and even spoke similar i was thinking how was i gonna get out of this i know he was gonna start it up again i was like girl this is me talking to myself you just gotta tell him fuck it at this point so he comes out the bathroom while i'm smoking and looking zoned 
found out. He asked me if I'm okay. I said, yeah. So here Painted Beer goes and sits next to me on the bed and rubs my thigh, ready to start it up again. So I'm like, uh. So I said to him, I think I know why I'm not getting wet. He said, why? I said, um, to be honest, you remind me of my dad. Painted Beer was taken aback and quiet. Then he said, uh, okay. I'll take that as a compliment what <laughs> well i'm not gonna waste anybody's time he got off the bed so fast and put his clothes on he said if i want to ride the train he'll take me there i said i'm gonna put my clothes on so i went to the bathroom and had i went to the bathroom and had an Issa Rae moment i kept saying to myself oh my fucking god oh my god oh my god this is embarrassing i was peeing and looking in the mirror like wow this is really happening i kept saying to myself bitch do not take that ride so I got out of the bathroom and Painted Beer is in his car. I'm standing by the door and I'm confused because he looked like he's waiting, but he's because he looked. And I'm confused because it looked like he's waiting, but he's not making no eye contact. I already knew I wasn't taking that ride. That would have been awkward as hell. And he didn't want to spend money at the motel. He kept trying to invite me over. But it was my first time meeting him. And I wasn't trying to be in a stranger's apartment. Anyway, Painter Beer came out of his car, took his clip from the ashtray, went back to his car and sped the fuck off. Simone, when I tell you I was dying of laughter, I was. I think that man thought I was stranded because I ain't drive. I took an Uber, duh. Of course, I have money to get home. I called one of my homegirls and we both was laughing while I was on my way home. More of a story, just because that man is older doesn't mean he know what he's doing with his thing. Oh my God, sis. No, that is funny because not him, not him thinking I'm finna skirt off on you and you stuck here. Like, first of all, first of all, you paid for the whole night. So if I didn't want to go home, I could stay in this room. And second of all, bro, nobody was finna get in the car with you. Like, that, that's so funny. It's crazy that you thought that you didn't realize it. I, I'm happy this story went the right way because I swear when I read the title, I was like what in the daddy issues but no that's so funny sis like it's crazy that you realized it at the last minute i hate when that happened when you realize something at the last minute like something don't click to you until like when you already there and it's like fuck now i realize what this was like damn you is my old teacher no i'm just kidding but no that's so funny but that's the end of subby sunday for this sunday i'm only gonna i only did three stories y'all because right now it's 11 23 and i do want to edit at least some of this video if not all of it and i still gotta get up tomorrow and i wanted to record another video but i'm not but yeah don't today today is the first day tomorrow i'm gonna have a good story time for y'all and i'm gonna have good story times for y'all the whole week so yeah don't forget to like comment subscribe if you would like to send your story make sure you send it to simone story times at yahoo.com do not send it anywhere else and i don't know now i'm starting to think people do it on purpose like i swear i say this all the time like i say send it to the story time email that's right there in the description box i say send it here don't send it to the personal emails and every time somebody sends to my personal email i'm, like, I'm gonna send them to all three of they'll be like hey girl send it to all three of emails so you can read it don't do that i just delete the email i don't even read it like i read that whole little title right there subject line and i delete that shit because like i said don't send it to my business emails because i don't need them there just send them to this one and yeah i'll go through them make your title real i'm gonna go through all my emails of course eventually but make that title real just juicy ah so when i'm going through them i could be like oh wait hold on but yeah that's it for this story so submit your stories over because i would love to read them thank you guys again everybody that participated and peace out